Well, we all know that our food production wouldn't be anywhere where it is without the help of the bees. And I'm talking here today with Jim Murph of WW4Bees who has made his livelihood with pollination services uh, of hundreds of hives throughout the country and fascinating to talk to you today and learn about your yearly operation but we're going to get started here with typical hive and, and and work into how you're making your livelihood every every day okay in the pollination business you get honey as kind of a byproduct okay but we're there to do pollination for people whether you're doing almonds or blueberries uh, lavender or whatever all right and we have to travel around the united states to do this what will happen is when we come back to Tennessee, we've got to increase our numbers because that's what that's the whole business is numbers. How many hives you get, how many can you provide to a grower, all right? So what we do is we get our hives back in here, let's say in another month. Now this is a hive minus bees, okay? okay? I, I think y'all appreciate that. <laughs> anyway. We're getting pretty close in here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you'd pull, it, you'd pull frames out Make sure your queen wasn't on it. Okay. And you'd put them over in, in a, in a uh, nuke hive and throw a lid on it, and you've got a nuke in a new hive. This is considered one nuke. Yep. And this is the ability to replicate and grow the hives after they've come back from the fields? Here we are going into the transition of spring, and it's going to be food everywhere. They're going to explode. And pretty soon they'll stay in there for a little bit, and then we'll put them in a regular 10 frame hive. Okay. And um, and that that's our whole game right here on being prepared for wherever we may go later in the summer to do a crop, whether it's like I say cranberry, blueberries, or whatever. Gotcha. And how many nukes are you you're trying to create every springtime to keep your hive up well, and healthy? Theoretically, our bees will come back in here, and there'll be uh, 18 frames in here full of bees. Okay. So we can steal four frames and start a nuke or so. So if you've got a hundred hives, on paper, that means you can have 300 hives in a couple of months, okay? When you go to California, you'll go and you'll have, usually have a broker or sometimes you end up with a grower. Okay. All right, the grower says, yeah, I see all these boxes, is there anything in them? And they've been burnt before. Yeah. And I'm not, a, you know, I got a good broker and good places to go, so I'm, we're always on the square, but they'll go out with crews and open up hives uh -huh. and count the bees. They count the bees by looking at the bottom and seeing how many bees are in here. If this top story's got like five frames of bees, they know they got about 15 frames in this hive. So keeping your hives up, keeping them hives healthy, very important. And you mentioned the types of crops that you're pollinating on a yearly basis. You mentioned cranberries, and t take me through a, you know, right. a given calendar year for you. We're here in the tail end of winter, fixing to almost be spring, yep. if we have a spring. Yep. All right, we're coming back from California and we're doing almonds. Almonds require two hives per acre, okay? Yep. And after they've pollinated, then they're ready to come back. Sometimes it could be the end of March before we're ready to come back. We'll come back here, do all our splitting here. Turn around and go maybe to Wisconsin and do uh, cranberries. Cranberries. Or you could go up east and do blueberries or cranberries. You could go out to the Dakotas and do uh, clover, sweet clover, for which honey, is a tall honey. clover, not like we've got. And it, and the plant just makes tremendous amounts of honey. Clover honey. All right, yep. and then uh, end of, end of uh, summer, you'll go back down to Florida, where it below Orlando, where it's warm, okay. year round, and you set your bees out in locations there, and as things bloom and everything, it would be, you know, uh, Maluka tree, uh, let's see, uh, Spanish clover. There's something always happening down there. So we'll go down there and stay there until we get ready to ship from there to California in January. That's basically our calendar year there, about five stops. We load them on a semi and here they go. So it's pretty much a, it's an operation that's made, meant for uh, pollination services as well as honey production. It's kind of balanced out throughout the year depending on where you need to go. Yeah, my first priority is gonna be pollination. Okay. That's, if you're a grower, 
I want to be able to fulfill your needs there. And when they go into almonds and do that, they'll have a June drop. And that means all the blossoms and fruit that didn't get pollinated hit the ground. Okay. So they can say, oh, we didn't get good pollination on this end of the field or something. So they can, there's ways to check, and that's just a, lay way, a layman's kind of way of doing this. And, but yeah, uh, my first priority is gonna be pollination. It's always pollination, honey secondary. Yeah, and, it, and you know, bees have been in the honey business longer than I have. Yeah. So they, they make it, they are gonna make it, you know? Yeah, right. And, but it's also a food source for them. If they're, if they're happy, I'm happy, uh -huh, you know, and uh -huh. so. Gotcha. And we feed, we have to feed a lot. We feed sugar uh, and syrup, all kinds of stimulus, uh, you know, pollen patties and things like that. How often? As needed. Yeah. If I get ready to go somewhere and they're not topped out, and you stimulate the queen by feeding her or have providing food, whether it be in a tree or, or a flower. Yep. All right. Then uh, you stimulate her to lay more bees because we're looking for numbers. Yep. We want more bees, more bees. More bees. More bees, yeah. the better. Yep. Because, see, half the bees you see in a hive are workers inside. They're going to stay there, let's say, 20, 30 days. Okay. And then they get their pilot's license and they go fly around, okay? be a worker be in the fields until they die in maybe 30 45 days that's their cycle yeah yeah that that's their cycle. whole wow. that, that's what we've got to have we've got to have those flyers out here and so that's uh that you know a field bee works and works and works and brings everything back our bees work uh, they're stationed on pallets okay instead of individual little hives these are individual hives but on a pallet we use a big fork truck to pick them up yep stack them up about three high. We normally just run bees in a two-story high is all we want. We pick all these up, stack 450, an even number, Give 450 <laughs> yeah. on a tractor trailer, yep. put a net over it, okay, and they take off from Florida, let's say. And they, in two days, they can be in California. And they got another Hummer bee out there, a fork truck, it takes them off and places up. them out. Okay. And maybe the next night he's got another truck or two coming. It just it goes on and on and on. Until the next stop. And they're staying out at most of these these uh, pollination periods for anywhere between one to two months. Is that yeah, about right? Before like they get loaded yeah. back up and you got them sent off to another part of the country for a crop. Yeah. It's kind of odd, I mean, to not ever see winter. Yeah. <laughs> they're always in the warm, or in the Me warm too. periods. Or, I yeah. mean, I'm out there too. And so you mentioned uh, you mentioned almonds, and then after that, uh, we're going here. doing cranberries. We're going to come here back and here, and then and then and go do cranberries. Then we're going to do cranberries, and then the clover season, yep. and then uh, and then after that, we're down to Florida. Florida, Florida, and pollinate whatever's available and feed. It, it could be not. anything, food crops, mm -hmm. uh, in the agricultural scene. Okay. I mean, look at what's at the at the grocery store. All that produce that's in there is made and grown in Southern California or grown in Florida. Yep. Well, or South America. It's fascinating, fascinating life you lead here, Jim. And uh, can't thank you enough for all the services. Uh, what you do here is absolutely crucial to, to the food supply. And so thank you for taking the time and speaking with us well, today. Well, I'm, I'm glad to help. All right. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.